Can we talk about Shell? The repair shop. Oh, oh. Do you know the first thing I did when I got off the cruise ship, I came to my mum and dad's and I said, Mum, have you watched the repair shop? And she said, Oh, I've already seen it. But the king was on there. And I was like, Oh, I was hoping I to watch it with you. <laughs> <laughs> so the repair shop is this program here in the UK. And I think you can find it on Netflix as well where it's people bring in pieces that are connected to them in some way and basically it needs repairing, but there's always a heartwarming story behind the pieces yeah. and what it means to that person. And so, for instance, on this episode, which was to celebrate BBC's 100th anniversary, the show's experts repaired an 18th century bracket clock and a ceramic vase, which was made for Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. Charles, the king, he was deking out of it, wasn't he, over this vase? <laughs> oh, he was. And I tell you what, I looked at the vase and I was like, they're never going to repair that. That's really bad. Some of the glaze was completely off it, wasn't it? Yeah. And I thought, well, this needs a complete restoration. And then at the end, when I saw it, I was like, whoa, they've done the most amazing job. And he actually said, didn't he, that the Queen Mother was would play games of like keeping all the clocks in time yeah. <laughs> in Karen's house. And then also that he really enjoys collecting these commemorative jugs of pottery and stuff. And I was like, that's a weird pastime, but we'll just go with it. And it's weird because surely he doesn't have to collect them. He, he just has access to them. But what was really funny was people on Twitter were commenting on the bromance between the king and Jay, the presenter. It was a massive bromance. It really was, it was wasn't such it? such a bromance. And what made me laugh was Jay was kind of like, oh, here you go, I bought you a cup of tea. And he was like, oh, just, you know, just what I wanted. And the mug, the cup had HRH on it. Oh, it was brilliant. Because at the time of recording, he was the Prince of Wales. This was before he became king. But what was so great was to see the king's passion shine through because it showed the apprenticeships at work. You know, he has a passion for restoration work. And to see that at Dumfries House in practice was absolutely amazing. It was brilliant. And what I loved was you could tell that the reason he was on there wasn't just, oh, could you fix these items? The whole show was about apprenticeships and how important they are and how the initiatives that King Charles now has have really championed apprenticeships and restoration work. They had blacksmithing on there. There was the roof thatching. There was so many different skills. The king said that there was a lovely full circle moment where the people who were apprentices become the teachers and yeah. then they teach their skills because they are dying trades if they don't get taught. And yeah, I just really loved it. The one thing I liked actually was one of the guys that were, I think he's a regular on there. They have like the regular repairers, don't they, on the, sh on the show. Yeah. And his son was helping to repair the king's clock. And I just wanted him to meet Charles at the end, but it was just <laughs> the guy. I was like, oh, he kind of like, I want the apprenticeship to come out and, yeah. you know. But it but was a lovely, really heartfelt episode. Did you cry, Rach? Did you have a little tear? No, I didn't cry. But what I did love was when we got to see inside Dumfries' house, which was a treat in itself. It's beautiful, isn't and it? And then there was a lady that works there, a conservationist, and um, she was saying about Chippendale furniture. And one of the restorators was like, oh, this looks like Chippendale. And she was like, no, that is Chippendale. It is. Chippendale. Yeah, it's not Chippendale style. It's Chippendale. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, we own 10% of the whole stock of Chippendale in the world. <laughs> and we're like, of course you do. Yeah. You're the royal family. <laughs> but Dumfries House looks amazing. I wonder whether we can visit there, Rach. Yeah, it's something that we'd have to look into. I mean, we still need to go to Highgrove in the summer to see the gardens, don't we? Oh, we need to go everywhere, but there's so many places <laughs> we haven't visited. If you haven't watched it, Royal Community, we highly recommend the episode. It's just wonderful, isn't it? Actually, we really got a sense of who Charles was in that episode. He's so kind and warm and inviting, isn't he? And gentle. He's so gentle. Yes, absolutely. And that's one thing I loved about that show, that you really got to see that sensitive, the, actually the real Charles is what I thought. I didn't feel like he was, oh, this is the, at that time, the Prince of Wales. He yeah. was just himself, like really yeah. enthusiastic about apprenticeships and also what they were going to do. And he was really humbled when he got the bars back, wasn't he? And the fact that he um, takes a pair of sacateurs everywhere with him. <laughs> When he's there. <laughs> Just in case they need pruning. 